All right, welcome back to the HS Arena Invitational with Calvin Sottle here to bring you a show match, depending on how you want to spell that, between Eloise and show. Uh, it's filled a little bit of time before we hit our semifinals, obviously missing one of our quarterfinals between Nyria and Eloise. So we didn't want you to miss out on, uh, on, on getting an extra dose of Eloise on the stream. So uh, show was happy to take up the challenge. The show, the show grills in chat uh, were more than happy to uh, push him forward for that. And apparently these guys are going to play some... Uh, some un unorthodox, interesting, fun decks. We've no idea what it is that they're playing. Uh, I'll see if I can get the classes in just a second. But uh, before we do that, I don't think we have the classes available. So we'll just uh, we'll see what we get when we take it. But so before we get into that match, let's talk uh, to you a little bit about the last match we just saw. Two beers versus Strife Girl. Uh, our last open qualifier in the tournament, and he's made it into the top four. Yeah, that's a really awesome story for the tournament. Really happy for, for Two Bears. I was watching the, the games on and off. I think there was a, a couple of shaky moments from Two Bears, but I'm not going to put that down to his ability as a player. Obviously, this is a huge like breakout performance for him, um, so it might just be nerves. But I really like um, something you, you guys talked about extensively. I really like his, his tech choices, his deck building, his overall last hero standing strategy. Like The game plan that he's brought to the tournament is fantastic, and he's executing that very well. And honestly, like that can often be more important than like little mechanical mistakes here and there in games in Hearthstone. If you really like understand the meta of the tournament that you're coming into and you have that sort of high level understanding, that can work out really well. And we saw particularly like one card dread scale just do insanely insane work for him in a couple of games. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised looking at the the lineup of Eloise. She does have Warrior, Hunter, and Paladin. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I'm assuming Eloise is watching that going into a semi-final. I wouldn't be surprised to see that Hunter just banned out from now on for two beers just because it was so teched out and so strong against those particular classes. Right, Warrior, Hunter, Paladin. If you shove Harrison Jones and a Dread Scale into a Hunter deck... That's what you're trying to counter. Yeah, you're looking pretty good at beating that lineup. So yeah, the Hunter ban might be pretty sensible from, from Eloise if it, if it does come down to that. Yeah, but that's going to be our second semi-final that we're going to get into uh, in a little while. We've, of course, got Zalay versus Sixo in our first semi-final. We're going all the way through to the final today in our third place match as well. Uh, four players left, Zalay, Sixo, Eloise, and uh, Two Beers. We said Sixo was probably the favorite to take the whole thing from that top bracket. He's got a very tough matchup against Zalay. Uh, I feel like Eloise and Two Beers, that's something of a, a wild card matchup between those two. Eloise, we haven't really seen her in a major final at all in a, a Western competition. Um, of course, Two Beers, a, a complete newcomer. Yeah, Eloise definitely has a little bit more tournament pedigree, but she doesn't have that that big win to, to hang on a flagpole yet. Um, to really put her up there with like the names that you'd consider a major threat to everything they enter. Two beers, of course, almost almost brand new to the to the major tournament scene. You know, the broadcasted tournament scene. I uh, don't know anything about his his record in you know, the online scene and all the the little community tournaments that a bunch of us play in. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely the matchup of uh, two of the two of the names that are still looking to break out really huge that were left in the top eight. So, all right. So we see the players getting ready. Show. Uh... A little bit of a pre for him. He did lose in the first group stage to Eloise. So he's looking for a, he's looking for redemption here. Oh, baby. And see the Druid for show versus the Warlock of Eloise. Uh, some interesting Hungry Crab-based tech there for show. All right. Um, um, I'm going to go on a limb here and say there may have been a little agreement here that they just play autocomplete decks because I don't see any particular theme developing here. This may have just been the uh, Innkeeper's Challenge. You just open a deck, close it immediately, and get the innkeeper to fill in all 30 cards for you. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to see some nonsense here. But honestly, Innovate through Marfasia is not the worst thing in the world. It's pretty bad up against Coin Dart Bomb, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. So, a tournament attendee as well. Interesting. Golden tournament attendee, no less. Golden tournament attendee. So this is interesting. She actually, like, she actually turned down the dart bomb, and it looks like she's going to go for a coin uh, iron forge rifleman play on the boss here, but the show is going to shut that down straight away. Hero power down that pesky attendee of tournaments and just pound face for four. So this Thrallmar Farce here got on the board early, wailing away already, four damage and counting. Yeah, it does keep the coin so the dark bomb can come down on curve to deal with the Farseer, but uh, at the cost of four life. Uh, Fairy Dragon really starts to tie this hand oh, together. Suddenly it all makes a mess. Um, Fairy Dragon, sure. He's going to play the Darnassus Aspirant. 
Honestly, Hungry Crab, that might be a risky play there, because knowing what you're up against, there could just be some random Murloc shoved in this deck that you can gobble up for value. I'll tell you, if you want to see a counter to the Hungry Crab, how about the Corruption from the side of Eloise? Value. Absolute value. Uh, Fairy Dragon in the hand for show. A card that I do sometimes feel quite sorry for, because uh, you know we all talk about Dragon decks these days. Paladin, Dragon Paladin sometimes, Dragon Priest. But uh, sadly... Fury Dragon doesn't get a look in. Why is that subtle? Um, do I mean Priest just has the better option with the Wormrest agent? It's just a better minion. 2 4 is just a much better shape than 3 2 up against the things that you're facing against. And just honestly, like vanilla 2 mana 3 2s, which is essentially what Fairy Dragon is, you know, it's resistant to Frostbolt and Dark Bomb and stuff like that, sure, but it's not like a big impactful ability. So just vanilla two mana three twos just kind of suck. First and foremost against Shielded Minibot, they suck against Mad Scientist. So when you're a two drop and you interact terribly against the two best two drops in the game, you're not in a particularly good spot. Hey, that's a six four. That's not to be sniffed at for three mana. Yeah, but that's some good value. Unlike most regular Warlock decks, when they have a large hand, they're full of cards that cost four mana, six mana, Doctor Boom, seven mana, you know, a couple of couple of Molten Giants that might be unplayable. Uh, this hand, um, Eloise can play nearly all of it if she really wants to. I'm just going to see a Corruption slam down on the Goblin Mind Sapper. Loot Hoarder comes down, reduces the damage on the Goblin Sapper, and she can play out even more here if she wants to. Yeah, Light Warden going to come out, and there we go. I, I have to say, I'm really enjoying the confusion of Twitch chat right now. Uh, I mean, we, this is the HS Arena tournament, and this is the most arena-like you're going to get, I think. Right. Yeah. From these random cards. I have a certain amount of pity for someone that just wanders into the broadcast right now. Just like, ah! Oh! <laughs> this is the most interesting tournament I've ever seen in my life. Well, I mean, we, we said it was going to be unorthodox and uh, it's going to be more interesting than things like last year's standing. Oh, baby. Uh, dark bargain hype. Let's talk about the dark bargain. What is uh, What does it do, Sol? And uh, for people for people in chat who've maybe not seen it before... You're genuinely I'm asking me that because you don't know, aren't you? I, I kind of... I can't... can't God, Callum, you tell me what Dark Bargain does. I, honest, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> it's uh, destroy two minions at random, discard two cards at random. Uh, enemy minions, you can't destroy your own minions. There you go. Yeah. That's what it does. I knew, I knew it was destroying a minion. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Things Basically. die and things get discarded. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. You, know, you get the idea, yeah. New card, TTT out. Exactly. This is the stellar quality of cards that the TGT expansion introduced into the Hearthstone meta. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sure. Uh, so what have we got here? We've got the Doom Guards, the Flame Imp, Rip and the Malganis. Although the coin, which held on to for so long. Yeah, the coin go, does go down the toilet as well, which is obviously the best card in her hand to discard, but... Holds on to the Dark Bargain, so she might be able to cast that for some pretty sick value at some point, since her hand is so empty already. And you think we just see the Recycle come down on the Doom Guard here, throw that back. Not the first Recycle we've seen in this tournament, thanks to Casino Mage. Yep, good old Unstable Portal, making weird cards playable since, well... It's a Spell Slinger rather than Unstable Portal. Right. Because I'm a moron, yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Well, we both had a brain fart so far this match, Sol. That's uh, one apiece. All Sat right. Casters equally. Twitch chat can keep score, I guess. Ooh, Armored Warhorse. Did you notice that uh, when Yago was playing Rogue, the number of Sap casters in chat did increase uh, by about 30 to 40%. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Doesn't guess, get the joust. I guess when there's an actual card on the screen that may be capable of sapping casters, it becomes a more attractive prospect, right? Exactly, when it's yeah. sitting in the hand. Yeah. Well, Fugan. I think Fugan's the 4 7, right? I didn't see it being drawn. I think that's the good one Take that's the right shape yeah. that doesn't just die to true silver and things. It does 7 damage to face when it dies to true silver, though. That's not to be sniffed at. Yeah, sure. All right. It does die to fist of your axis. I was going to say, it doesn't die to flame cannon then, how about? <laughs> Oh, Speaking of Fist of Jaraxxus, what a call. I mean, I, I think you just kill, you take the fist here. What an animation, by the way. Let's let's talk about the Fist of Jaraxxus It is animation. immensely satisfying. <laughs> I have played a decent amount of like the, the actual Fist of Jaraxxus zoo deck. And one of the most satisfying things, when the, when the Fist of Jaraxxus actually does what you want it to, uh, which for me is of course never, um, it is just incredibly satisfying because of that pounding animation. 
All right, so the 4-7 does hit the board. Not really the kind of bombs that Eloise needs, and she hasn't been able to get this dark bargain off. That's that's what's really holding her back here. Oh, I'll do a raider. That'll do the job. <laughs> just <laughs> after she played Hero Power as well. Yeah, of course. And this dark bargain's just been untaskable the whole time because there's only been one minion on the board. Stone Tusk Ball! <laughs> Some boar control from show, perhaps? Uh, this is uh, not quite as effective as the last Stone Tusk Ball we saw used in this tournament. Uh, it's, no. It's getting in there. He's, he's chopped 50% of her life off that turn thanks to the Stone Tusk Ball, so... Maybe it's not too terrible after all. Nerebar Weblar. That's a, a card which uh, sometimes it comes off Shredder and you're, and you're pleased about it. It's one of the one of the best cards to see on the field that you would never put in your deck. Sure. Is this a Robocop? This is quite the comeback from Eloise here. Yes. She looks very dead, but Sho just hasn't been able to make minions stick on board. And is that going to be it? Not quite. No, she's going to need something a little bit extra. Soul fire? Does that do it? Eight, uh, yeah. No, two That's... off, right? Really? 8, 13, 14. Uh, oh, yeah. She just doesn't have a nice minion to trade into the into the taunt. So soul fire face mm. isn't a possibility. She'd have to soul fire the minion. That sucks. Yep. Unfortunately. So yeah, I think that's uh, the almost a great comeback from Eloise. <laughs> the show is going to take a 1-0 lead in this best of three show match. It is a show match. It is his match. So, uh, mm. you know, he's on pride here to win his own match. Yep, so she's going to tap, take the honourable way out. Jeeves wasn't going to be very helpful either. She'd really love to have drawn, like, anti-kill bot that turn. She could have up the Raider, could have made some things happen. If anti kill bot is in whatever deck that is, yeah, who knows, right? Like, how do you how do you actually make reads based on what's going to pop out of this deck? Could be anything. Could be anything in the world. Oh well, show jumps out to one 0 lead, and uh, Eloise. I mean, this is just a show match, but she's going to be on form here. She is playing in a semi final in just a, an hour or so, so she's got to be sharp. And you know, <laughs> she's not playing her tournament decks, not showing any hidden tech here. But uh, can we make any reads on her tournament performance based on this show match? Uh, no, let's just okay. say that. Okay. I Oops. mean, really, yeah. what kind of question is that, Calum? Wait, I, I thought this was last year's standing. Show's changed his deck. Oh, wow. I didn't need to get the admins in here. Yeah, this is a controversial. Is there a Reddit thread about this yet? Can we, can we, is, is someone covering this? <laughs> well, a shaman from Eloise and a, pre, and a paladin from show. I believe uh, we saw Argent Lance come into hand, so yeah, this this uh, Whirling Zappo is going to get taken down. Oh my, <laughs> hello. Termu. Hello, that's a Nuzdormu. Uh, Seal of Light, another very good arena card. Yeah. It's okay. It's alright, it, it does some things. Stormforged Axe, on the other hand, is a fantastic arena card. A lot of, uh, lot of weapons in the hand there. Rock Biter Weapon, Charged Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. Just our true heart in the shaman. We talked about that yesterday. Is uh, shaman really got the fuzzy end of that one when Justicar came out? Right, being able to select your own totem out of the the regular ones. I know so. Like I spoke to some people that were like, "No, no, no Justicar's gonna be sick in shaman." I was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "You can just pick like manatide totem every turn." And no, no, that's, no, that's that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, sap whoever that was. <laughs> I wonder. No uh, real good play here. The charged hammer. Yeah, it might just be time to get now. the charged hammer rolling. Trying to turn that hero power into um, something more useful, the two damage ping per turn. But then if she does that, her Justicar becomes useless because Justicar doesn't modify already modified hero powers. So there's some anti synergy in her randomly put together deck. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk it? The Spiteful Smith, though, there is some synergy here. That's, yeah, that's fair. Spiteful Smith could definitely get some things rolling, buff up the damage of all these weapons she has in her hand. She's locked herself out of playing it by overloading with the, uh, the Stormforged Axe this turn. Unfortunately. So, what option is she going to draw? Undertaker, hello! Wow, I mean, that, that goes nicely with these this hand of four clunky minions that don't have death rattles. I mean, we're talking about throwbacks with last year's standing. Here's a throwback with Undertaker. Sure. 
Um, definitely looking like the uh, the Paladin has the better, better side of the hand to... I mean, purely by having the card Muster for Battle in his hand, which is an actual Hearthstone card, he probably does have the better end of this exchange right now. There's a Hogger. That's a card which did get played around with in uh, a couple of classes over the past year, but it's not something that finds a stable home in the card. Sure, it's something that floated in and out of uh, decks that were trying to be defensive when the meta was particularly aggressive. Hogger was uh, replacing things in things like Control Warrior. A couple of people tried it out in Ramp Druid, but yeah, it's just one of those cards that just barely misses being good enough because of how good and how versatile and how, like, if there's always a six drop that does something specific for your deck be it like Emperor, Sylvanas, just a card. There's always something that like increases the game plan of your, your deck individually. As Hog is just like, you know, it always does what it does, but generally you want something more focused in your deck in that six mana slot. All right, Consecrate doesn't get any work done here. Stone Skin Gargoyle doesn't get anything going either. It's a one attack minion. You don't want to be playing that on turn six. We may yeah. see, the, see the Seal of Light here. Seal of Light can give him a three damage oh, Light's Justice. He then has the South Sea Deckhand that you can play on top of that. So there's five directable damage from hand this turn if he wants to do that. Not quite sure where that gets him, but basically he just wants to go all in, in uh, on protecting his Hogger this turn, because obviously Hogger is one of those minions where if you leave it alone for multiple turns, it does just snowball the board incredibly effectively. So it looks like, yeah, just seal a light, chop down that uh, Spiteful Smith, and looks like we are going to see the Stone Skin Gargoyle. Shul looks in a pretty commanding position uh, in this uh, Shul match here. Indeed. I've got to be very careful saying that, because it sounds like I'm trying to be funny every time, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not. It's actually just what they've called it, so yep. yeah. The Wind, wake, wind uh, Speaker comes down, it comes into the hand. Uh, but unfortunately, the only target for it to come down on is a zero attack totem, so no dice there for the uh, wind speaker. I mean, you can hit for zero twice. That's value, right? Uh, yes. Unfortunately, this show match has been disrupted slightly as we've uh, just lost our video feed, so we're going to go quiet for just a second. Feel the power of the wind. All right, so uh, Shul did manage to get the win there, win the best of three, Shul match. Eloise uh, not taking that momentum into her semi-final. Shul with the deal with its sunglasses, and uh, Eloise is going to look to have perhaps a better result coming up in her semi-final against two beers. We're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we will have our semi-final between Zalay and Sixo getting back into the, uh, the serious business of the tournament. And then after that, it's going to be Eloise versus two beers. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the HS Arena Invitational.